Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our virtual Mishtaburach here. We're holding a Mishtaburach, Chalik Aleph, and we will be learning today, Yemir Tzashem, Daf Zayin Amid Beis. We are holding in Simon Gimel, and we pick up on Zayin Amid Aleph, two lines off the bottom of the Shulchan Aruch with Sif Zayin. So, in yesterday's shir, we had been discussing one who has the need to use the facilities he has to defecate, so he's going to, well, we would say he's going to the bathroom, gedolim. he has to defecate. And we said that somebody who has the need to do that, he, if he's in an open area, he should make sure that he is not facing either east or west, preferably he should be facing north or south. And why is that? So we discussed that the Makam Ashkina is considered to be in the Mayrev because the Kachi Kachim was in the Mayrev of the Heichal, but the Mizrach also has a certain level of Kedusha because the Mizrach faces the Mayrev. The opening of the Heichal was in the Mizrach, and therefore there is considered to be Kedusha both to the Mizrach and to the Mayrev, albeit more Kedusha in the Mayrev than the Mizrach, and therefore if somebody has the need to defecate and he's in an open area, he's not surrounded by Mechitzais, he should make sure that he is not facing east or west. But if he's in an enclosed area, and we spoke about if he's in a house versus if he's out in the field, but he's in a chotzer courtyard that's surrounded by walls. But then we said there's no problem. But that was all discussing somebody who has the need for gedolim. Now we're going to speak about ketanim, somebody who has to urinate. So the Mechara says here in Siv Zion, mayim min hatsoifim v'lifnim. If somebody urinates from the place in Yerushalayim known as Tzaifim. Now the word Tzaifim sounds like the lookout, Velifnim, and further inwards. That means closer to the Makam Amikdash, closer to the Harabayas. So if he has passed the point of Tzaifim, he's within from Tzaifim to the Harabayas, and the Ramah says, What is this Tzaifim, Pirish? This was a location from which you could see the Har Habayis. But from that point and further out, away from the Har Habayis, you're not able to see the Har Habayis. So we're talking about somebody who's in Yerushalayim and he's closer to, ha- to the Har Habayis than this place called Tsefim. So he's already in an area where you can see the Har Habayis. What's the halacha? Says the Mechaber, Loi Yeshev. The word Loi is in brackets, but as we're going to see in the Mishnah we do read the word Loi. Loi Yeshev Upanov Klape HaKodesh. He should not sit down to urinate with the front of his body facing the Har Habayis. You see, over here, urination is treated uh, more leniently than defecation. When it comes to defecation, you're not allowed to defecate if your body is aligned Mizrach to Mayrev in any open area, no matter how far away from Yerushalayim you are. When it comes to somebody who has the need to urinate, it depends how close to the Har Habayis he is. If he's past the point of Tzaifim, so he's located somewhere where you can actually see the Har Habayis, then from that point and closer to the Har Habayis, you're not allowed to go urinate if the front of your body is facing the Har Habayis. Ella says to Mechaber, you should make sure that you're facing either north or south. Or if it's impossible for some reason to directly turn away to the north or to the south, he should at least position himself so that he is not aligned with the Har Habayis. He should be Yesalik, he should remove himself, Litstadin, to a side, so that he's not aligned with the Har Habayis, but to urinate directly facing the Har Habayis. When you're already in a location from which you could see the Har Habayis, that certainly would be disrespectful, and that is something which you are not allowed to do. Says the Mishtabura Ois Katan Yud Gimel, Two lines off the bottom on Zayin Amit Aleph. 
loy yeshev upanav. We we read the word loy that appears in the brackets. Kain sarch loymar. That is the text as it is supposed to read. Taz. This is brought down from the Taz. Ushare achreinim as well as other achreinim. Now it's very interesting actually to take a look at the different gersois and to see where this word loy came in. Apparently, in early prints of the uh, Shulchan Aruch, that word loy is not there. Also, in early prints of the Rambam, we don't find the word loy. This Lushan comes almost directly out of the Rambam, and we don't find the word loy. However, the Kesef Mishnah um, emends the Rambam and adds the word loy to the Rambam. Now, who wrote the Kesef Mishnah? The Mechaber, Rabbi Yosef Kairoi. The Mechaber of the Shulchan Aruch is the Mechaber of the Kesef Mishnah. So the Mechaber in the Kesef Mishnah added the word loy to the Lashon of the Rambam, even though we don't find the word loy in early editions of the Shulchan Aruch, and I think in early editions of the Beis Yosef as well. So along comes the Taz, and the Taz says, look, from the three Chiburim of the Mechabers, you have the Beis Yosef, the Shulchan Aruch and the Kesef Mishnah, the latest one was the Kesef Mishnah. That's the one that the Mechaber wrote last. So if if in his last work he amended the Rambam and he put in the word Loi, then certainly that is a very strong indication that the word Loi belongs here. And therefore the Taz says to insert the word Loi Yeshev, upon of Klapi HaKadosh, here in the Shulchan Aruch as well. Ice cut in your Dalad says to Mishnah you should not position yourself so that the front of your guf is facing the harabayas, el olet safain. Rather, you should position yourself so that you're facing north or south. Says the Mishnah for who adin im achorev klape ha-kodesh, shari bahatolas meraglayim. You could actually turn to the east. You don't have to turn to the north or the south. You could turn to the east so that the front of your body is facing east and the back of your body is facing west because when somebody has the need for Merak Lion, he does not have to expose himself in the back at all. He only has to expose himself in the front. And for urination, the Mishnah says, it's okay if you're facing east, as long as the back of your body is facing west and is covered. Vayin Bibir Agra, however, the Mishnah says, take a look at the Bir Agra, Shehiskim, who holds the Afilu Min Hatsoifim Velachutz. That this halacha actually pertains not only if you're closer to the Harabayas than this place of Tsaifim, but even if you're further out from the Harabayas than Tsaifim. In Panav Klape HaKadesh, if the front of your body is facing the Harabayas, Osir Bahatolos Meraglayim, you are not allowed to urinate. Continues the Chavetz Chaim, Osir Lamed Lipanais Lehedyo Neged Beis HaKneses Oy Beis HaMedrish. Somebody is out and there is no. Uh, he's in a locale where there is no proper base hakise, and he has the need to go for ketanim out in the field, and there is a base hakneses or a base hamedrish nearby. Also, lamid lefanois, you're not allowed to position yourself. Actually, this is talking about defecation again. Lefanois means defecation, not urination. Also, lamid lefanois, you're not allowed to position yourself to defecate lehed yin neged beis hakneses opposite a shul a beis hamedrash or a beis hamedrash to lo yehei mechlal mishenemar aleim vachireim al hechal hashem so that you should not chas v'chalilo be included amongst those of who the pasuk in Yecheskel writes vachireim al hechal hashem. This was talking about a bunch of kaifrim who left. They went out of the beis hamedrash out of the azara. And they turned their backs to the Azara as a question whether or not they actually defecated or not. But they turned their backs, so to speak, to the Heichel. And the Psukim say terrible things over there. So you don't want a Chas Chalila be included in this group of people. Likewise, you're not supposed to construct a Beis Akise directly opposite a shul or a base medrash. Shaloyehe hapia tabas megula negdom. So that when somebody is using the base akise, he should not be exposed facing the base akneses or the base hamedrash. 
However, the Mishnah Berurah says, How about if you put up a wall between the building of the Beis Akise and the building of the Shul? So you put up a wall between them, to separate between the walls of the Beis Akise and the Beis Akneses to the walls of the Beis Akneses, says the Mishnah Berurah, then there's no reason to be stringent. That would be okay. Now, it's very interesting. Because what the Mishnah seems to be saying is like this. To have a shul and directly opposite the shul to build a Beis Hakise is a problem. Why? Because the people inside the Beis Hakise, when they use the Beis Hakise, they are, so to speak, exposing themselves in the direction of the Beis Hakneses or the Beis Hamedrash. But if you put a wall between the Beis Hakise building and the Beis Hakneses or Beis Hamedrash building, then it's okay. Now, wait a second. This Beis Akise building has walls, right? We're not talking about making an open Beis Akise. We're talking about building a Beis Akise. So the Beis Akise is going to have walls. So what's the problem? And it, the Mishnah Berurah himself says, <clears throat> it's okay if there's a wall between the Beis Akise building and the Beis Akneses building, but the Beis Akise itself has a wall. So what I'm thinking is, this may depend, I believe there's a machloikis, of what the status of the outer wall of a Beis Hakise is. When you have a wall of a Beis Hakise building, the inner portion of that wall is, is on the inside of the Beis Hakise. So that certainly has the din of a Beis Hakise. What's the halakha of the outside surface of the wall? Is that a mechitza that separates between the Beis Hakneses and the Beis Hamedrish and the interior of the Beis Hakise? Or is the entire wall of the Beis Hakise, Beis Hakise? The wall itself has a din of a Beis Hakise. And therefore you need another wall to separate between the Beis Hakise and the Beis Haknesis and the Beis Hamedrish. I believe that is what the Mishnabura is saying over here. Okay, now we go to the top line, Zion Amit Beis Sivches. Kishenifne Basode. When somebody is defecating outside in a field. Okay, so a person is out and about. And again, we're talking about a time and place where there is no proper Beis Hakise. So he finds himself out in the fields and he needs the facilities. So, says the Mechaber, If you find yourself in a position where you're going to have to defecate in the Sade, Im Hagoder, Let's say there's a gedder is typically a stone wall. So there's a stone wall surrounding the field where you are. If you're behind a stone wall, so you are sheltered from other people. If you're behind a stone wall, you can do what you need to do right there. You're behind a wall. So you are sheltered and you have privacy. So you could take care of your needs right there behind the wall. Ubibika, however, if you're in a bika, a bika is an open plain. You're in an open, very open area with no gedarim. There's no stone walls. So you're out, mamish out in the open. You have no shelter. Ubibika, then yisrachek, you should make sure that you distance yourself from people. Ad mokayim shaloyuchal chaveroi lirois peruoi. Until you're so far from the people that they will not be able to see your exposed private areas. That's peruoi. His literally peruoi means they won't be able to see his exposure. What does that mean? It means his exposed private areas. So what's the Bechari telling me here in Sifches? He's addressing a person that's out in the outdoors. Like, let's imagine for a moment an agrarian uh, society. So you're out in the fields. There are no... Uh, porta, you know, uh, porta potties around. There are no proper besakises around. So somebody is going to take care of his bodily needs out in the field. And he's not alone. There are other people around. So says the Mechab, it depends. If you could find a location where there's a stone wall and you could go behind the stone wall so you're sheltered by this stone wall and other people aren't going to get be able to see you. So then the Mechab said, you put a miyad. Then you could take care of your needs right then and there. 
even if there are other people relatively close by, but they cannot see you because you're sheltered by a stone wall. But if there are no stone walls, if you're in a bika, you're in an open area, and there are people around, so then the Mechavah says, Yisrachek, you need to distance yourself, Ad until you're so far away that people will not be able to see your exposed condition. They will not be able to see your exposed private areas. Says the Mishnah Barais Kotten Tezvav. Yipanem Yad. If there's a stone wall that you could position yourself behind, then it's okay. Taha ein chaveira roya es peruoi. Because since you're sheltered by the stone wall, the other people are not going to be able to see your exposed condition. Vechein bechotzer achoire kaisalabayas. This also would be true if you're on a construction site and you have to take care of your bodily needs and there are other workers around and the house is uh, in a chotzer, the construction site is in a chotzer, and you could go around the back of the building so that you're sheltered by the walls of the house. So fine, so you could do what you need to do right over there. This is true, even though somebody might be so close by that he might be able to hear the bodily sounds that often accompany defecation, right? They might hear him passing gas, etc., which doesn't sound like such a bakovitic thing. Still, says to Mishnah Bura, you're not mechuyiv to distance yourself so that a person will not be able to hear these sounds. You have to be sheltered from vision. Tznius, the requirements of Tznius are that you have to be have enough privacy that somebody will not be able to see your exposed condition. But hearing the sounds, that the Mishnah Bruce says is okay. That's not a problem. There's no prohibition. This does not go outside of the bounds of Tznius. The fact that somebody is going to be able to hear these sounds. It's something that a person personally feels is embarrassing and maybe disgraceful. The Chavetz Chaim does not deny that most people would be uncomfortable. They would feel embarrassed you know, from this. But that's not a, 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 a violation of the requirements of Tznius. The vision is a violation of the requirements of Tznius. So you must be sheltered from somebody else's sight. The sound is not a violation of the requirements of Tznius. It's embarrassing. It's shameful. Maybe you'll be uncomfortable, maybe you want to distance yourself, but halacha does not require it. If somebody's not makbid, he's not makbid. The words of the mechaber war, that if you're in an open area, you have to distance yourself so that other people will not be able to see your peruoy, your exposure. Says the Chavetz Chaim, which loimar, what the Mechaber needs to say with the word Peru is Giluyoy, his revealed, his exposed condition. Masha Megala mi Bisaroy, what he is uncovering from his body, Milofanov to the front, Aymala Akharov, or to the back. Vafa Pisha Roya as Gufoy, they might see him. In other words, you're not Machuyev to go so far away that they cannot see you. They might be able to see you, but they can't see and discern your exposed condition. It's still motor. You know, learning these halachas, you know, sometimes people who are learning these halachas, they might struggle with it a little, and they might feel like, what are we getting so detailed over here, and exactly how far, and exactly what you could cover and uncover, and all of these details in the requirements of Tzniyos, so let me tell you a quick story. You know, we make a bracha every morning. And I always like to say over in Shiurim that I give, I always quote the Torah. Many of you have heard this from me. I think you might have heard it even recently in the Mishnah Burish here. We make a bracha every morning. And 
And the Torah says that that bracha of Asher Bachabanu is not a berachas hamitzvus; it's a berachas haida. It's a bracha to thank the Rabbi Nishalaylam for Maimon Har Sinai. We're saying Gebenched is the Rabbi Nishalaylam Asher Bachabanu Mikalaamim, who chose us from all the nations for Nasan Lanu Es Tayrasi and gave us the Torah Hakdasha. We're thanking the Rabbi Nishalaylam for giving us this. Part of what we're thanking the Rabbi Nishalaylam for is these halachas of Tznius. This is also part of the Tarak Daisha. It's part and parcel of the Tarak Daisha. We saw the Bira Lacha brought down the smack that Snius is a mitzvah sasei daraisa. V'hoya machanecha kadosh. Right? So we're thanking the Rabbi Nishalalam, among other things, for giving us exactly these halachas of Snius. Somebody might say, I mean, come on. Do we really? I mean, we really have to thank the Rabbi Nishalayim for giving us this. I mean, don't most people understand this even without the Tirak Daisha? Well, let me tell you, I was once in a municipal courthouse. I was involved in a trial, and I was in the courthouse, and we had to wait for a while. There was things going on in the in the courtroom. The judge was busy until he got to our case. So, out in the hall, and we're waiting meeting with attorneys, and strategizing, and this and that. And at some point, I needed the Beis HaKisei. So I go to the Beis HaKisei. Okay, go to the Beis HaKisei. Do what I need to do. Come out of the stall. Go to wash. There's a stall. And the conversation that's coming out of that stall, this obviously an attorney, right? Because I hear what he's talking about. He's obviously an attorney. He's talking on the top of his lungs. So everybody in this Beis HaKisei can hear every word of his conversation, right? So he's in a stall in the base like he say, and he's having this loud conversation. And I'm thinking like, you know, how mious this is. I mean, like we just had Allah, lo you're not allowed to speak, right? And this guy is not only speaking, but he's speaking, you know, he's he's holding forth. He's, he's... but you ready for this? I even hate to say it because of how disgusting it is. The door to the stall opens up and the guy comes out holding a sandwich. You hear this? Are you hearing this? The guy comes out of the stall of the Beis Kise holding a sandwich. So the guy's in the stall in the Beis Kise carrying on this phone conversation and eating breakfast. Now, I have to tell you, I'm not the only one who looked at this guy when he came out like, like he was a cockroach. I mean, like... I wasn't the only one who looked at him this way. I have to say that a lot of the Enom Yehudim also looked at him like he was something disgusting that crawled out from under a rock. And, but he came out, he was, he was a little flustered. It was like, well, yeah, like I was late for a trial. And I had to grab a bite and, you know, you got to do what you got to do. All right? Baruch atah Hashem alakeinu melech ha'elam shaloy asani goy. Baruch atah Hashem alakeinu melech ha'elam asher bachar bonu mikalo amim and nasalonu es terosoy. You want to know why does a mitzvah say Vayom Achanecha Kadosh? Because without the Torah Hakadosha, you could be that guy in the stall, all right? Because ultimately, the truth is, if you'd sit him down and you would have a, a real in-depth, serious conversation with him to discuss why what he did was wrong, really, from his vantage point, from his perspective, the only thing that he did wrong is he went against social conventions. It's socially off to do what he did, but. If everybody is socially off, if everybody is just as disgusting, so then it wouldn't be against any social conventions. All it is is social conventions. Not so by us. Smack. Sneus, Mr. Say Daraisa. It's a Torah It comes from God. It's divine. It's not social convention. The requirements of Sneus are Mr. Say Daraisa. And you know why? Because because this uplifts us. This makes us uplifted people. Why is that important? Because it also makes us a clay kibel for the Tairak The The Tairak is not going to settle inside a disgusting keli, right? The, the klisharis and the Besamit Dosh have to be precious metals, right? Gold, silver. You don't take a disgusting earthenware thing to be makabal the dam by the mizbeach and, and, and do zrika, right? So you have to be a clay kibble for the Torah Tosha. Vahoya machanecha kadosh. There's a requirement. Vahoya machanecha kadosh. So again, that's asher bacha bonu mikala amim v'nasad lanu es Yes, 
we thank the Rabbinu Shalalam for giving us these halachas of Tznius. Okay, with that, let's go weiter. Some practical things that the Mechaber wants to tell us. Siftes. Okay, let's take a look at Siftes. Now, Siftes is taken from a Gemara Shabbos Daf Pebez Amit Aleph. Very interesting, the Gemara. The Gemara says like this. <clears throat> Amalei Ravuna le Rabba Bere, Ravuna said to Rabba his son, My time of Loishrikas Kame de Ravchista, why don't you spend more time sitting by Ravchista, the Mahadrin Shmaite? His teachings are very, very sharp. You should spend more time by him. Amalei, so Rabba said back to his father, My Azel Legabe, why should I go to him? The Chiazil Legabe, whenever I do go to him, Moisavli bibile dama. What does he talk to me about? He seems to talk to me about very, very mundane things. For example, Amarli, he once said to me, Man da ayilabesakise, one who goes to use the facilities, Loile save behedya, he should not sit down quickly or forcefully, Veloilitrachtve, he should not strain himself overly, Dahai karkashta, because the karkashta which we generally translate as the rectum, the bowels, the high karkashta, atlas shine yosif. It is supported by three teeth. And if you sit down quickly or forcefully, or you strain yourself overly much, dilma mishtamta shine de karkashta. There's a risk that these shine de karkashta, these teeth that support the karkashta, will become dislocated. And you might come to a dangerous uh, condition from that happening. Okay. Amalei, Rav Huna responded to his son, and he said, You don't want to go to Rav Chista because he's busy telling you things like this, and you think that somehow it's not worthwhile. He's talking about things that are very, very much the gear to the daily lives of people. Vat Amrit Bimile da Alma, and you make fun of it and you say that he's talking about mundane things? Kolshkein Zil Legabe. If this is what you could learn from Rav Chista, if Rav Chista is going to teach you things that are going to help you take care of your health on a daily basis, certainly you should go learn by Rav Chista. So don't knock what Rav Chista is teaching and say that Rav Chista's teachings are not lofty enough. These teachings are very important. So let's take a look here at Siftes, says the Mechaber, when somebody goes to use the facilities, a person should not sit down either too quickly or too forcefully. And he also should take care not to strain himself too much. So that these these teeth that support the rectum or the bowels should not become dislocated, a very, very practical teaching that the Gemara, you see, praises very, very much. Now, exactly what are these Shinea Karkashta? Not 100% sure. It seems that this, according to the just basic reading of the Gemara, maybe it's the muscles of the rectum, maybe it's the, the hemorrhoids, but it's something that could become displaced through too much straining in using the facilities. Okay, now let's go on to Sif Yud. Very, very fascinating Sif to me, Sif Yud. Says the Mechaber, Lo yikaneach biyad yamin, when you go to clean yourself after defecating, you should not wipe yourself with the right hand. Why not? Well, let's take a look here at the Mishtabura. Mishtabura is cut yud zayin. Biyad yamin, you should not use the right hand. Why? Because you use your right hand to tie the tefillin on to the left hand. So you do something very, very chashev with your right hand. You use your right hand to accomplish the mitzvah of tefillin. The act of tying the tefillin on to the left hand is done with the right hand. So the right hand is a very chashev keli. You don't take a very chashev keli and use it for a Dover Maguna, use it for something lowly, use it for something even, you know, disgusting, a Dover Moz, you don't use it to go clean yourself after defecating, 
Marshal Lamaha Daima. Let's imagine somebody needs a knife. Maybe somebody has to go out to the garbage. Somebody lost something. They're afraid one of the silver spoons might have gone into the garbage. So you want to go outside and you want to take the garbage bags and you want to cut open the garbage bags and you want to sift through the garbage. So you need a knife. So you're going to go to the break front, take your silver Shabbos challah knife. You know, the beautiful knife with the silver handle, L'chvay Shabbos Kaidesh, the non-serrated knife that you carefully go and sharpen every Arab Shabbos. Is that the knife that you're going to go use to cut up the garbage? No. You're going to go get a razor blade. You're going to go get, you're going to take a, 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 a tool. You're not going to go take your, your Shabbos challah knife, right? When you needed a Kli Shares in the Beis Amigdash to do the Kabbalah Saddam, to do the Zrika Saddam, Al Gabi Mizbeach, you used a golden klishares, a silver klishares. You don't take a, a, a an old used earthenware keli. When we light chanakalicht, what did we learn? We said you're not allowed to use an, a, a used ner shalcheres. Because a ner shalcheres, you put oil in it, it gets dirty, it gets moss. That's not something that you use for a mitzvah. So if you need to, to clean yourself after using the facilities, you don't use a chash of a keli. You don't use your right hand, the hand that you use to tie on your tefillin. Now everybody is shaking their head. And there's a very, very obvious kasha here. And that is, you're telling me I shouldn't use the right hand because I use the right hand to tie the tefillin onto the left. Yeah, but I actually put the tefillin on the left. So why should, I can't use the right hand because I use the right hand to tie the tefillin onto the left. But I actually put the tefillin onto the left hand. So hold that thought for a moment and let's read a little bit weiter here in the Mishnah. So first the Mishnah says you should know <clears throat> while I'm giving you this reason for why you don't clean yourself with the right hand, you should know there are other reasons given for this halacha as well. Ayin Begemara, take a look at the bracha, the Gemara and Brachas, Samach Beis Amad Aleph that I'm going to read to you in a moment. But before we read the Gemara, let's go a little weiter. Says the Mishtabura, Vitaiv li Zahir, it would be good to be careful. Milakaneach be etzbaha em You should not clean yourself with the middle finger of the left hand. You know why? Shekairachalov haritsua, because of the kasha that we just asked. Certainly, if you can't use the right hand to clean yourself, because you use the right hand to tie the filling on to the left. Well, then make sure not to use the middle finger of the left hand because it's the middle finger of the left hand that you tie the ritsuis of the tefillin onto. So the, the ritsuis of the tefillin actually go on that middle finger. So do not use the middle finger of the left hand. So that's one answer to our question of why is the right hand more important than the left? The tefillin actually go on the left, says the Chavetz Chaim. In a chinami, when you use the left hand, do not use the part of the left hand that gets the tefillin on it. Remember, the tefillin are actually on the on the left forearm. They're not on the left hand. We dash in the Gemara, al yadacha, yadacha is yad keya, it means you put it on the left hand, but it doesn't go on the yad itself. If somebody would put the tefillin on the yad itself, he would be at Tzaduki. We put it up on the left forearm, keneged halev, we put it near to the heart. So the ikr mitzvah of tefillin is done on the left forearm where the bias of the shel yad goes. Where the ritzuis go are really, to a certain extent, secondary. And when it comes to the hand itself, really, where do the ritzuis go? The ritzuis go on the middle finger and on the palm. Now, you don't use the palm of your hand to clean yourself. You use the fingers to clean yourself. So, says the Mishnabura, do not use the middle finger, because that's the finger that gets the ritzuis. The Levushe Srad, they bring down also, the Levushe Srad seems to say that, that the, again, that the tefillin don't really go on the hand, they go on the arm. Um, also, it could be, I think the Levushe Srad is also saying that you really clean yourself with the fingertips and the tefillin don't go on the fingertips at all, not even on the middle finger. It goes 
on on the middle part of the finger, like over here, but it doesn't go up on the tip of the finger, which is really the part of the finger that you use to clean yourself. Now, before we finish off this ice cutting in the Mishnabura, let me read to you this Gemara, Bracha Samach Beis Amit Aleph, because it's actually a very, very interesting Gemara that gives other reasons for this halacha as well. The Gemara says like this. Frak the Gemara, Mipnei Ma Ein Mekanchen Biyamin. Why is it that you do not wipe yourself with the right hand, Ella smile, and instead you use the left hand? Why is that? So the Gemara says, I'm a Rava, Rava said, Torah nitna biyamin. Because the Torah was given Kaviyachal with the Rabbinu Shalalam's right hand. The Pasuk in Vizayi Sabracha says, Miyaminoi, from his right hand, Eish Das Lamoi. That's where we got the Eish Das. That's where we got the Torah of Eish. The Torah that was written in Eish Shreira Gabi Eish Levan on black with black fire on top of white fire before Bria Sa'olam. So that's the Eish Das is the Torah. And the Torah was given Kaviyachal with the Rabbani Shalom was a right hand. And therefore there's a Hashivas to the right hand. We cannot use the right hand for something mundane like cleaning ourselves after we use the facilities. That's Rav. Rabba Barachana Amar. Rabba Barachana Bar Gives another reason. Rabbi Barbachana says, Mipnei shihi lepe. Rabbi Barbachana says, the vast majority of people are right handed. A right handed person eats using his right hand. And that means that he's very often bringing his right hand to his mouth. Now, obviously, the, the pihatabas, the anal opening where you're going to clean yourself, is not a very hygienic area. And uh, there's all sorts of bacteria and everything else located over there. And it's simply very unhygienic. We don't want you using the hand that you may then come to use to eat to clean yourself in that area. Okay, two reasons. Now a third reason. Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Reish Lakish said, So the reasoning that the Mechaber, that the Mishnah Brewer gave us is Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish says, you know why you can't use the right hand? Because you use the right hand to tie the tefillin onto the left hand, and it's not by kavodik to use the right hand that is used in the accomplishment of the mitzvah of tefillin to use it to clean yourself after you defecate. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak gives another reason. He says, Neshem Torah. He said, you use the fingers of the right hand to indicate the tame haTorah. What are the tame haTorah? Well, imagine if the Gabai is standing next to the Balkara, and the Balkara, unfortunately, is not very well prepared. So while he's laning, the Gabai is showing him with his finger the trap. You know, he makes a pashta, and then he makes a revi. So you use the fingers of the right hand. I'm not sure if what we're seeing over here from Rav Nachid by Yitzchak is that this is something that was a minig, this is something that was an inyan, to use to indicate the Tamei Torah with the finger, or just it was a practice that was commonly done, and it was commonly done with the right hand. So since you use the right hand to show the Tamei Torah, again, it's not a kavodik to use the right hand for something like cleaning yourself after using the facilities. Okay, so so far we saw over here three different reasons in the name of Amaroim. We have Rava, Rabba Barbarchana, Reish four reasons, and Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. Now the Gemara says, Kitanoi. It's actually a machlek is Tanoim. We have Tanoim that give different reasons for this. Rabbi Eliezer, I'm the Tani, Rabbi Eliezer said, He said, very similar to Rabbi Babrachana, he said, the reason we don't use the right hand is because we use the right hand for eating. So it's not appropriate to use the right hand for this. The Tani, Rabbi Yeshua, I'm Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua said, most people use their right hand to write. What do you write? The stomach you're writing Divrei Torah. So the hand that writes Divrei Torah should not be the hand that's used to clean yourself. And finally, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva said, just like Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak, because you use the right hand for the Tamei Torah. So here we have, we had Sach HaKoyal, we had four reasons given by Amaroim, we had three reasons given by Tanoim, Two of the reasons given by the Tanoim are same as two of the reasons that were given by the Amaroim. Now, there's a very practical nafkimina in the fact that the Gemara gives these other reasons. And that is what's the halacha by a woman. A woman does not use her right hand to tie on the tefillin onto her left arm. 
So that reason would not seem to apply to a woman, in which case a woman should be able to use her right in. But some of the other reasons that are given in the Gemara, like it's the hand that's carved lepe, it's the hand that you use for food, right? That does apply to women. So it would seem that the bottom line is a woman, this halacha applies to a woman as well. She also should not use the right hand. Okay, now let's go further in Mishnah Baruch's cut in Yudzayin. The Kasva Achreinim, the Achreinim right. The Itariad, a lefty, Shekal in Yonav Oisab Ismail, a true lefty who does everything with his left hand, what hand should he use when he needs to clean himself? Now remember, the lefty puts his tefillin on his right arm. So he uses his left hand to tie his tefillin onto his right arm. So in the Chinami, the Mishnah says, such a lefty, Mekanech Bismol Diday, he would use his left hand to clean himself. Um, his left hand, Bismol Diday, what is considered his left hand, Shehu Yimin Kaladam, which means the right hand. A lefty would use his right hand because a lefty's right hand is the equivalent of his left hand for everybody else, right? Everybody else's weaker hand is his left hand. The lefty, his weaker hand is his right hand. So he should use his right hand to clean himself. But Mishnah Bura does say, if you have somebody who's somewhat ambidextrous, then Kaisav Bismayel, if he uses his left hand for writing, Usha'ar Maisav Aisabiyamin, but everything else he does with his right hand, Ayla'hepech, or the opposite, Ayn Bibir Halacha, for that you have to look in the Bir Halacha. Okay, now on to Sif Yod Aleph, another fascinating Sif. Says the Mechaber, Lo Yikaneach Becheres. You should not use an earthenware shard to clean yourself after using the facilities. Now, first of all, right away, it sounds strange. An earthenware shard. So, first of all, let's remember. Um, until not all that long ago, we didn't think that toilet paper was a luxury. We found out about two years ago that toilet paper could actually be a luxury. So they didn't have toilet paper. We're also going to see that there was a very good reason why they didn't use toilet paper, because the Mechaber is going to say that back in the day, you are not supposed to use flammable materials to clean yourself after using the basic kise, and we'll see some reasons why. But you weren't supposed to use anything flammable. Toilet paper happens to be flammable. Paper is flammable. Um, leaves are flammable. So what did they use? So the Gemara often talks about tzror. The Gemara says that they actually used rocks. Doesn't sound very comfortable, but I guess if you have a smooth rock, like the type of rock you would take to the park to go skim, you know, skip rocks in the water, you have a nice smooth rock, you can imagine that that could be something that you could use for that purpose. So the Gemara always talks about tzror. Over here, the Mechaber says, don't use an earthenware shard. Earthenware shards were very popular in the time of the Mishnah and the time of the Gemara for all sorts of purposes. Let's remember that they used earthenware kalim quite a bit. And earthenware kalim don't always last very long. They could break through excess heat. They break by dropping. Sometimes you have to break them. You know why? Because they became tummy. And if an earthenware kalim becomes tummy, you can't toil it in the mikveh. You have to break it. So, so earthenware shards were something that were always around, and they were very useful. The Gemara Chavez talks about taking an earthenware shard and using it as something to fry or, or broil a fish on. They would take a little fish and put it on an earthenware shard. They would fire up an earthenware shard in the oven and lay a fish on it. So earthenware shards were common, and they were useful. They would use them as knives. So the Mechara is telling you here, do not use an earthenware shard to clean yourself. Why? Mishum Kshafim. Because of Kishuf. Now first, let's take a look here at the Mishnah It says the Mishnah Baruch is cut Yud Ches. Becheres. You should not use an earthenware shard. So right away, the Mishnah Baruch points out, there is another reason why you wouldn't want to use an earthenware shard. And that is it could be dangerous. It could cut you. So the Mishnah Baruch says, Afilu hi chaloka. The Mechaber is addressing a case where you have a nice, smooth earthenware shard. So that it's not going to cut you. Because if it's not smooth, and it has little serrations, or it's sharp, certainly you can't use it because it would be also because you're putting yourself in sakana. You could hurt yourself. You might cut yourself in a very delicate area. Now, I want to read to you, I can't resist, 
I want to read to you the Gemara in Shabbos. The Mechari said we shouldn't use an earthenware shard. Why? Because of Kshafim. Okay. Says the Gemara over here in Shabbos. Pay Aleph Amid Beis near the bottom. Kihad Rav Chistava Rabba Bar Rav. Well, the Gemara starts off by saying, My Kshafim. What Kshafim are we talking about? So the Gemara says, Kihad Rav Chistava Rabba Bar Ravuna. This is like the story of the great Amaroyim, Rav Chistava Rabba Bar Ravuna. Have a ka'azli ba'arva. They were traveling on a boat. They wanted to go on a ferry. Amrulahu hahima trunisa. There was this noble woman who said to them, Oisvan bahadaychu, take me with you. Veloy oisvua. They didn't want to take her. Amra ihi milsa. Guess what she did? She cast a spell. Amra ihi milsa. She said something. Something significant. She cast a spell. Asrasa la'arva. And she immobilized the boat. She cast a spell. I don't know if she had a magic wand or not, but she cast a spell and she immobilized the boat. The boat's not going anywhere. Okay, not to be outdone. I mean, we're not talking about little people here. We're talking about Amaroy. Talking about Ravchista. Talking about Ravchista. Rabbi Baravuna. Amru Inu Milsa. So they returned the favor. They cast a spell. Shuruha. They released the boat. So their spell beat our spell. Amra lahu, she said to them, you win. Ma'i avid lahu, what could I possibly do to you? You are not susceptible to my witchcraft. Deloi mekanech lahu bechaspa. Apparently, you're not in the practice of cleaning yourself with shards of earthenware. V'loi kata lahu kina amanaychu. And apparently, you're not in the habit of killing lice while they're on your clothing. V'loi shalaf lahu yarka and you do not remove a vegetable, mikisha da aser gina, yarka, you do not take out a vegetable, va'achilachu, and eat it, mikisha from the bundle da aser gina, that the farmer tied up. So in other words, the farmer goes, he harvests a bunch of carrots, and he ties the carrots together. You go to the farmer's market, you buy a bundle of carrots. To take a carrot out of the bundle and eat it, is something that makes you susceptible to Kishuf. So this Matrunisa, who clearly was uh, accomplished at witchcraft, she told the Amaroim, I cannot affect you with my witchcraft because you do not do these three things. So apparently these three things make you susceptible to witchcraft. Therefore the Machabra says, do not use a shard of earthenware to clean yourself, lest you make yourself susceptible to Kishuf. Okay, now, do we have to worry about this? Well, let's go further over here in Sif Yod Alf. So the Machaber started Sif Yod Alf and he said, Continues the Machaber, You also should not use dried grasses or dried leaves, dried vegetation. You know why? Because if you cleanse yourself with something which is flammable, Shina vatachtoinois noishrois. Again, you're going to have trouble with the hemorrhoids and with the muscles of the karkashta. Okay, I'm not sure. The Mepharshim seem to have different takes on this. Do we shine him? Whether this is a practical thing? Somehow, practically speaking, if you use something flammable, it has that effect? It's a physical thing? Or is it a supernatural thing? Kind of like the Shard of Harris, which is supernatural. It's witchcraft. The Rishonim seem to have differences of opinion. Continue in the Mechaber. Nor should you use a rock that was used by somebody else and it has his excrement on it. Why? Because that could lead to diarrhea and other afflictions. Hagal says the Ramah, the Akshav nowadays, nowadays that our uh, bathrooms are not located out in the fields. We use shards of earthenware, and we also use flammable materials, like toilet paper, and it doesn't affect us, and the Ramah says, go out and take a look, you'll see, everybody is knowing this way, this is widespread meaning, and it's okay. Says the Mishtabura, you should not use the tzrar, the rock that was used by somebody else, but if you yourself used it, and now you want to reuse it, or if somebody else used it, but it's already dry, doesn't sound very pleasant, but I guess if you're stuck, 
Aisha kinach mitaracher, or you use the other side of what somebody else used. Less long ball, that's not problematic. Ice cut l'chav. The Ramah said nowadays art pote kisais enon basada. They're not in the field. V'loy shchichi kshafim, and it's not shchiach to have a problem of kshafim. Lachain muta becheres. Therefore, we could use earthenware. V'dafke imu chalak the chanal, but again only if it's smooth, so it's not dangerous. Ice cut l'chafaluf. The Ramah said we're noyik to use a davar sheha or shaylutba. We're noyik to use things that are flammable. Now notice. That what the Mechaber said was, you cannot use a Savim Yevashim because you don't use a Davar Shah or Shalupa. Came along the Ramah, and the Ramah said, we're not to use a Davar Shah or Shalupa. But what the Ramah did not say was, he didn't say that we use a Savim Yevashim. That he didn't say. So the Chavetz Chaim is wondering. He says like this, after it's possible, Davka Le'inyin Shardvar. Maybe the Ramah is only being matir other flammable items. Like toilet paper. But when it comes to Asavim Yevashim, maybe the Ramol agrees to the Mechaber not to use Asavim Yevashim. Why? Because we know you could cut yourself on grass. You could cut yourself on leaves. So maybe it's dangerous. This is very important. Toll now. The Mechaber was telling us halacha. He's talking about the requirements of Tznius, the smak, Tznius, which I say, Daraisa, Vahayamachanecha Kadosh. He told us about Kshafim. He gave us practical advice don't do things that could bring you to harm. Now the Mishtabura comes in the name of the Sefer Hasidim and he tells us about Menschlichkeit. Kishayoyd Semi Beis Hakise. When you leave the base of Kisei, Yire, you should see to it, Hamokim Sheyoshavalov, take a look at the place that you were sitting, the facilities that you used, Shaloh Yiyeti Noifos, that it should not be dirty. Shema Yove Chaveroi Pisoim, maybe your Chaver will come and he's in a rush, he's really got to go. Oibalailo, or he'll come at night, Vyeshavalov, and he'll sit in a filthy place. So Pashlut Menshechkeit, the Mishabur is telling us over here. You use the facilities, make sure not to leave it in a way that's disgusting. Make sure to leave it clean so that when your Chaverim come and they need the facilities, they are either, they're not famused, or they don't come into a, a, a situation that's compromising from the standpoint of hygiene. Very important. We have to have other people in consideration. Okay, we're going a little long, so we're going to stop over here. We'll continue next time with Sifiud Bays. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman Atara. Schos of Liman Atara, she be Megan and Gans Kla Yisrael. The Rabbanu Shem she said Yeshua is refuas parnasa chetuchim to all the need, and we should be zayich to see the Bias Galt Sedek from Harav Yamenu Amen. Be well.